So by this point, you might be wondering what Aristotle means by happiness. After all, as we saw with Epicurus, sometimes what these philosophers mean by, you know, some of these phrases, we don't exactly mean the same thing. When Epicurus was talking about pleasure, we think about sensuality. Epicurus is like, no, it's tranquility. <laughs> Well, kind of the same thing with Aristotle. I mean, we typically refer to happiness as maybe, you know, some kind of, you know, a feeling in the moment that makes us smile. It's like, oh, that makes me happy. Yeah, something like that. Well, that, that's not what he's dealing with. I mean, closer, a closer term might be something like fulfillment, right? What brings fulfillment, a completion to oneself, right? And the way that he is going to understand, so also, also the word is eudaimonia in Greek, and that literally means good spirit. And he's not talking about making your inner ghost happy. That's not what he's talking about. Uh, now Aristotle, uh, we are maybe it, it put it even. It's literally translated as good spirit, but maybe something that would be a better, you know, dynamic translation for this would be something like uh, well life, right? Good living is even probably a better term. Good living. That's actually really good. Actually, good living. And this, what this means is that you know everything that's up, you know, apart and about you, is working well. It's working in harmony, uh, and, and and you know kind of complete. Right. So, uh, what this means is is that you know, he thinks that you have two main parts to what you are: the rational and the irrational. Right. Now, the rational, or sorry, the irrational. Uh, you know, he explicitly uh, cites uh, the body, right? Uh, the health and well-being of the body. Right? This would be a good of the body. Right? Uh, the ir another part of the irrational. He doesn't mean like he doesn't mean irrational in the sense that it's completely contrary to reason. He's not talking about that. He just means that doesn't that wasn't that does not that which does not deal with the rational. That's what he's talking about. So he's got the body. He's got the appetitive, right? The desires. I want to be outside. I want tasty food. I want a brand new computer, right? <laughs> These are the appetites. I think it's also worth putting in there, uh, along with the appetites or the desires, um, emotions, right? Emotions, you know, anger, sadness, you know, you know glee, fear. These are all the, the irrational part of what you are. Then you have the rational. And you have the intellect, that which deals with knowledge, what's, with what's true and what's false. And you have uh, your will, right? he call, what he calls the moral. Uh, what, we, what, we, what we would probably refer to as the habitual. Right? What you decide to do. Okay. So uh, happiness then is this proper you know, working together, this proper balance, this proper coordination of the body, the heart, the mind, and the will. I think it's fair to say, we probably use these terms today, I think it's fair to say that's what Aristotle's talking about. The body, the uh, heart, the emotion, the mind, and the will. And when these are working together, right, when these are working together, that is fulfillment. And excellence is, is another word that he uses. That is uh, living the good life. You've got good, good body, good emotions, right? a good mind, and a good will. Then you're happy.